All right, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at this old Sanlaw analog multimeter. This came from an old box of junk on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I may or may not have a video just going through the box, but it's got a whole bunch of different electronic stuff in it. And anyway, one of the things that was in it was this old Sanwa analog multimeter. So this is an old Sanwa model U-60D made by Sanwa Instrument Co. Limited, made in Japan. And for the most part, it's in somewhat okay condition. There's a crack in the uh, plastic up here. Probes are nothing like what you'd expect to find on a meter that you buy today. I'm not sure how old this actually is. I did see on eBay these things seem to go for $40 to $60. But probes are just a sort of solid plastic barrel with a pointed end on the tip and I think they're actually yeah they're a little bit unscrewed there so these have kind of wiggled themselves out over time but real basic it doesn't have the uh, traditional finger guards that you would expect to keep your fingers from slipping onto the metal part of the probe and there's no strain relief on that the wire is reasonably flexible and of course the Connections aren't standard modern connections either. They're like uh, maybe a two millimeter. It's not really even a banana jack either. It's just a solid metal rod on these. And super thin wire, but there's nothing on this multimeter that would measure any large amount of current. In terms of ranges and measurement capabilities, we have DC volts from... A half a volt range up to a thousand volts. We have AC volts from two and a half volts up to a thousand volts. DC milliamps. Looks like we can actually go down to 50 microamps, the lowest current range potentially, uh, if that works the way that I think it does. But uh, anyway, uh, DC milliamps up to half of an amp. And then we've got ohms. And we have ohms up to, it looks like five kilo ohms on the meter reading there and then I've got the zero adjust for the for the resistance and I do believe these meters will have a battery on the inside of them for the uh, the resistance measurements they'd have to but uh, the rain switch does feel really good nice clicky really nicely detented but let's go ahead and take the probes off we'll take the back off of it here and this is the part that I'm kind of nervous about because this likely has a battery in it and it may have leaked all over the place inside this meter. I have no idea. Yeah, we've got two batteries. Oh, yeah. Definitely corroded. Uh, these are Radio Shack branded batteries. Inner cells. Takes two double A's, apparently. Oops, I pulled the, pulled the whole thing out. Didn't mean to do that. One of the batteries is actually still okay. The other one looks to have leaked, unfortunately. Yeah, that battery's uh, not in very good shape. Nice and fuzzy and corroded. Just what you don't want to see in your batteries. So we'll have to do some cleanup on that negative terminal. A little metal clip here just kind of popped out there. He goes in like that. You probably see that corrosion on that terminal is not very good looking. <laughs> but I think, yeah, there, I just got cleaned half of it up by tapping on it. So we'll probably go after that with some vinegar and a q-tip and just clean it up some i am kind of impressed only one of the batteries leaked as opposed to both of them but hopefully it didn't do too much damage but you can see down here just a whole bunch of resistors soldered onto the rain switch you can see the sanwa logo there and just a bunch of wires there's not really a circuit board in here it's just this piece of Probably, yeah, some kind of plastic that everything is mounted to. Just a whole bunch of resistors soldered around it. 
which is kind of crazy, but that's how analog multimeters used to work. So, and in your alkaline batteries, what usually happens is some form of liquid will seep out of the battery, and that liquid very quickly crystallines or crystallizes into this sort of white powder. The white powder is. I think it's like potassium hydroxide or something along those lines. But the best way to clean it is with white vinegar. And the reason why white vinegar works to clean this stuff is that alkaline batteries are actually basic, uh, or the chemicals inside them are basic instead of acidic. A lot of people think that alkaline batteries have acid in them, likely because car batteries have acid in them. Uh, but that's not actually true, and the best way to neutralize a base is with acid. Similarly, the best way to neutralize acid is with a base, so if you have like a car battery acid spill, you're supposed to pour baking soda on it. And if you have, in this case, we have a alkaline battery spill, so what we want to do is pour acid onto the spill, and vinegar is just a weak acid, of course. So this will neutralize the chemicals that are in this, and it'll keep the corrosion from spreading any further. And honestly, this doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure what these little plates are made out of, but they didn't seem to uh, really get any corrosion on them. I don't know if these are like maybe nickel or some kind of stainless. It wouldn't be stainless steel because they've got solder on them, but... That cleaned up surprisingly nicely. Kind of dry the excess stuff off here and shove some new batteries in it and see what happens. All right, we'll go ahead and slap some new Dura smells in here. These will probably leak within six months, so we'll be right back here again sooner or later if I don't take these out. But we've got battery power now, in theory at least. Go ahead and screw this back down. We'll see what this thing does. In theory, if we turn this to a resistance range, let's see, nothing really happens. Let's see what happens if we short the leads out. Oh, hey, look at that. That actually does work. Ah, of course I have the meter off the off the camera shot, but we should be able to adjust the zero until the needle is right on zero. It's like that. And I'm not sure if you have to do that in every range or not. Looks like you do. Never actually operated an analog multimeter before. I'm not sure what the proper procedure is. It kind of looks like the what happens if we adjust the zero in the lowest range here? Does it keep it? Not really. So I assume you just adjust it to zero in whatever range you actually want to use. So, you might have to bear with me a little bit for this testing. This is the first time I've used an analog meter, but from playing around with this, uh, this top scale is the resistance measurement. And if we have it in 1x mode, the resistance is what you expect it to be. It's what it's either zero ohms or up here it says 5k ohms. So if we set this up right now, we short the leads out, we get our zero adjusted, so we're right at zero, and we hook up a two kilo ohm resistor. See our needle just barely moves and it lines up perfectly with the 2k marking right there. If we go to something lower, say a 10 ohm resistor, let's see what this does. goes to spot on 10 ohms. And this is a 330 ohm resistor. Looks like that's right around where we expect it to be. Uh, this guy's a 1K. And looks like we're right at about 1K. If we go into the 10X range, that means our 1K resistor should measure right here now it should be at a hundred because you'd multiply it by 
10, so 10 times 100 be 1 kilo ohm, so it should line up with this mark right there. And it does, pretty much spot on. Let's see if I can't get a couple higher values of resistors and test the higher ranges, just to see what they do. It is kind of interesting that the scale seems to be very non-linear for the resistance measurements. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how these things work, but anyway, this is a 5.6K, so on the 10X scale should still be able to measure it. should be around the 500-ish zone, a little higher than the 500-ish zone. So that's good. We'll go up to the 100X zone, zero it out again, which it looks like we're pretty close already. Measure this, and now that we're multiplying this by 100,000, we should, or by 100, uh, 5.6K should be somewhere around the midway point, a little bit past the 50. Yeah, that looks like it works. And then this is a 100K resistor. And that's measuring right on the 1K mark, which 1K times another 100 would be 100,000. So now we go into our last resistance range here, which is the times 1,000 range. Looks like we already zeroed out pretty well. So a 100,000 ohm resistor should measure right at the 100 mark there. There we go, if I can make good contact with it, we're measuring slightly under 100K. I'm trying to get contact on it without touching it. Ah, there we go, it's exactly 100K. If I don't touch the leads as I'm measuring. So, Resistance measurement seems to work fine, and I imagine if resistance works okay, everything else should too, but we'll go ahead and run through a couple other ranges just for the fun of it. All right, so we have kind of new versus old here. Uh, I've got the EV Vlog 121GW and the Sanwa U60D both hooked into my little bench power supply over here. Right now we're in the half a volt range, which means that we're looking at this volts milliamps range here. And I assume 0 0.5 volts is going to make the most sense to look at this range that ends with 50 here, which is the middle one. And the power supply is set to one tenth of a volt, so we would expect it to line up with the 10 here. And it's just a little bit lower than that. You can see on the 121GW we are pretty close to 100 millivolts. Let's go ahead and just step it up to 200 millivolts. Again, we're reading a little bit lower than I'd expect. I'd expect to be at this tick mark here. So we're reading maybe 188 millivolts, and we should be reading right around 200. Set the power supply up to 0.3, maybe, there we go. Comes up a little bit, and now we're reading about 280 millivolts, slightly lower, maybe 279. We should be reading 300, so we're maybe a little bit low on this lowest voltage range. Uh, power supply is set to 400 millivolts. We're getting that according to EV blog meter, and we're getting more like, let's see, that would be, this would be 400, so we're around uh, 370 according to the Sanwa. And if we go up to half a volt, EV log meter says we're good. Sanwa says we're at more like 460 millivolts. So this is reading a bit low, at least in this range. We go up to the 2.5 volt range. In the 2.5 volt range, we're going to be looking at this top set of numbers and doing a bit of math. And you can see we're still just a little bit low because we should be lined up with that 50. Let's see if we can't go up to 1 volt. Yeah, we're a little bit low, we're even about 0.9 or so. Try 2 volts. Yeah, reading pretty low. That's only 1.7. Yeah, 
you can see the digital meter is showing we're good. Then we're off the scale at three volts, of course. Uh, 10 volt range, starting off at two volts. So now we're looking at the lowest scale and we're not doing any kind of multiplication or anything to that. It just is what it is. And it looks like we're at uh, roughly 1.8, maybe a little bit higher at two volts. Let's see if we go up to five volts because that should put us right in the center. Yeah, you can see we're a little low, maybe about five or 4.8. We should be reading five. We go up to 10. Yeah, we're just a bit low, uh, quite a bit low, really. We're reading 9.99 like on the digital meter. Power supply says it's 10, of course, and we're getting. 9.62 or so on the sand wall meter here. You go up to the 50 volt range. We'll go ahead and set the power supply for 25. So that should be right in the center. And you can see we are reading a bit low still. So we are very consistently reading low. I think this power supply goes up to 32. So. Yeah, again, 30 volts would be right here. So in this case, we're reading about 29 volts, and we should be reading 32. So DC voltage, definitely a little bit low. And getting into the 250 and 1,000 volt ranges, I don't really have a great way of uh, doing testing on those because that's fairly high voltage DC. All right, I've reconfigured the test setup slightly so that both meters are now in series and we're going to measure the current flowing through both of them. Fortunately, I have my power supply set at its, at its bare minimum current limit and we're getting about 6.6 .6 milliamps, which means I can't really test the two and a half milliamp scale. Uh, but if you look at this, we're on the 50 milliamp scale, so it'll be there. We're at approximately six milliamps, about 6.1 maybe, according to the Sanwa. Uh, EV log meter is claiming 6.5 and the power supply is claiming five milliamps. So let's see if we can't bump that up slowly. This probably won't change until we get up to, yeah, maybe it will. There's about eight milliamps. I'm reading maybe seven and a half over here. 10.8, we're reading exactly 10. Let's see if we can get it up to 25. We should be right at halfway. 25.3 or so, this power supply isn't doing a super great job of maintaining this. You can see it's bouncing around over here. At least this meter's saying that it's bouncing around. We're probably a little low, or maybe at 20. 23.1 or so on the sand wall. So it's very consistently measuring low. Then we get up to 50 milliamps here. It should be full scale. There's 51 almost. And we can see we're at maybe 48 over there. Back it off just one click here. Should be able to get it down to. Well, I thought I should get it back down to, yeah, there we go, 49.5 milliamps. We're reading 46, 45.8, somewhere in there. So still reading low. And then our last range is the 500 milliamp range, which let's go ahead and just start off with 100 or so milliamps. Probably the easiest. All right, so if I move this guy over here. Measuring 102 milliamps on the EV log meter and pretty much perfectly 100 milliamps on the Sanwa. And if we try to do full scale half of an amp at pretty much exactly 500 milliamps over here, and we're at probably what 470 on the 472 maybe on our sand wall meter so we're measuring 25 milliamps low or so i almost didn't do this test i honestly kind of forgot that i had this uh 
Variac. But anyway, uh, we are going to do a little bit of an AC voltage test. I've just got the leads jammed into the outlet on the front of this Variac. So that's probably not a good way to do it, but we're going to go ahead and turn that on. AC volts over here, reading about 0.6, we're on a 2.5 volt range, which is specifically this one. And really, that looks pretty good. 0.5 is right there. We're at 0.64. We're a couple clicks over it. That makes sense. Let's see if we can't get right around 1 volt. This is going to be real touchy because this is most certainly not what this thing was designed to do. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get 1 volt. Oh, there's 1 volt right there. And looks like we're reading just shy of 1 volt. And this range maxes out at 2.5 volts, which is right in this sort of range. And at 2.5 on the DMM, we're a little bit lower than 2.5 on the analog meter. We'll go up to our 10 volt range. So according to the analog meter, that's 4 volts. According to our digital meter, that's more like 4.4. If we get the analog meter at 10 volts, full scale measurement. And we're reading about 10.8 on the DMM. Go into the 50 volt scale. Let's go ahead and try to set it to 25. And get it in the center. That's 25 on the DMM. We're reading, reading a fair amount lower on the San Juan, more like 23 or so, 22 and a half. Get it up to 50 volts here. That's right around 50 volts, and we're reading maybe 46 on the San Juan. So, again, a bit low. And 250 volt range is the last one I'm going to be able to test. We'll turn it up to 100 volts. Let's see where we're at. It's 100 volts on the DMM. Probably only about 80 on the San Juan. And we'll turn the Variac all the way up as high as we can go, which is 147 volts. And reading maybe 130-ish volts on 135 volts, let's say. 130, well, probably reading about 132 volts on the San Juan with the DMM reading 147 volts on the max setting of the Variac. And one last test just for the fun of it. I'll take these probes out of here. We'll go two and a half volts. Two and a half volt range. We'll measure this Radio Shack battery that came out of it. Oh, it actually does still have a bit of a charge in it. Uh, so that's 2.5 volt range. We've got, oh, almost, what, 1.5 three volts or so. Let's see if that actually makes sense according to according to this. I could be reading it wrong. Of course it helped if I wasn't in EC mode. Yeah, 1.26 volts. Makes sense. So the Radio Shack battery that didn't leak is actually still Got a little bit of a charge left in it, surprisingly. I wonder if there's a date on this, actually. It'd be kind of funny. Fortunately, the Radio Shack battery does not seem to have an expiry date or anything printed on it. So, couldn't tell you how old that is. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. The meter is pretty old and it's reading low in some ranges, but it does still work. So, kind of an interesting piece of tech and... I've never owned an analog meter before, so it's a new experience for me. Glad to have it. See you next one, guys. Bye.